All right, what's going on everybody? So in this video, I'm gonna show you how to create a production level Postgres database and how to connect this to your Django application in just a few minutes. So typically I use AWS with an RDS instance to host my Postgres database. And if you've ever used AWS, you know there's a lot of complexity that goes with it. There's a lot you can do with it, but oftentimes that creates challenges. Sometimes you just wanna make that connection really quick and just get started. So uh, while scrolling on Twitter yesterday, I heard about Railway, so I decided to check it out I saw this post clicked on the link and then went through the process and I saw that you can actually host a Postgres database so I went through that process and it took me about two to three minutes to create that connection so if you've ever worked with AWS you know that it takes a lot longer than that just to set up a database so that kind of blew me away so I decided to write up a quick article and make a video on it so let's just go ahead and get into this. I won't go much into Railway and their features because I literally just looked it up yesterday and got started. I don't know too much about it, but I looked into pricing and so on, uh, and it seems like a really good platform, so I'll tell you more about it later once I learn more, but this process was cool. So this article is linked up in the video description. I'm using dev.2 this time instead of medium. So let's go ahead and get into it. What we're gonna do here is set up a quick Django application. We're just gonna run some pip installs, and then we're gonna create a database with Railway and make that connection. So let's go ahead and get into it. The first thing we wanna do is install Django. I set up a quick virtual environment. You can do it or don't do it. Uh, I just wanted to make sure to separate everything. So we'll install Django, and then we're gonna install Psycho PG2, if that's the right way to say it. Uh, that's also in the article and basically it's just a database adapter to postgres so we need this in order to use postgres with django so we're, we're just going to do pip install psycho pg2 okay i'm actually spelling that wrong so give me a second it's going to screw up the speed of this video <laughs> so let's go ahead and do that so psycho pg2 yeah that looks about correct okay so now let's go ahead and create a django application let me remove this right here i'll zoom in and we're just gonna do django-admin start project, and we'll just do railway underscore django. So we'll just create the app, cd into that. Okay, and there we go. So I'm quickly just gonna open up a VS Code instance. Um, give me a second here. Create a new window. I just need to close out another tab here because it's on the other screen here. Okay, so go ahead and open up the folder and I have a bunch of crap on my desktop. So let me just try to find this. I'm always testing things out. So railway Django and here is our application. So we're gonna stick to the command prompt instead of using this terminal. So in order to connect Django to Postgres, we're just gonna go ahead and go into installed, not installed apps, but into databases here. And we're gonna change this from the built-in SQLite 3 database to Postgres. So the first thing we'll do is go ahead and grab this and maybe I'll zoom in. I don't know how well you can see that. We'll copy that and we'll modify this. And then we're just gonna go ahead and add in the name, user, password, and port. And we're just gonna leave these empty strings. So this is what we need to make that connection. This is how Django knows about the database. So that's the first part. We have the Django app ready. And what we're gonna do is go ahead and go to railway app or railway.app. So let's go ahead and open this up. Go ahead and create a new account. I actually just created an account already, so once you have that ready, you don't need a credit card on file, so it's really fast to set up. Go ahead and go into dashboard and create a new project and select provision Postgres database here. So this is gonna take a second. It's much faster than AWS. Usually that takes like 15 minutes just to get that set up. So we'll just see how long this takes. There we go, it's up and ready. And this is gonna give us some default information. We're not gonna go into setting up things like the username and password. We're just gonna go with all the defaults because we're going for speed here. So here's our database. We'll go ahead and click this here. And if I go to connect, this is that connection string. So it kind of looks like gibberish. Um, I'll actually delete this after, but here is gonna be the password. So if I click hide and show, let me actually move this out of the way. So if I click show here, we can actually see the details. So here's my password. And then we have different attributes here that we're gonna get into. So in order to actually make sense of this, we're gonna go into variables here. And if we click on database URL, this tells us where the user is, password, and so on. So it's gonna give us everything that's built into that connection string. So we're just gonna go ahead and take each value here. So this is gonna be my database name here. So that's gonna be railway. So 
I'm sure you can modify that later. I'm very confident of that, but I just haven't done it, so I won't show that right now. So that's our name right there. Uh, then we have our host here. So that's gonna be that URL. This is gonna be the host in this section. We're just gonna copy that. Then we want a password. So we'll copy the password. We won't worry about environment variables or anything like that. And we want a user. So we'll go into PG user, copy that, and let's bring this in. So we have the user and then the port number. So that's the last part in this process. So we'll go to PG port, it's 6725, copy to clipboard, bring this in and that's it. That's the connection, it was that fast. So in order to actually make this work, um, first of all, let's look at our database. We have no table. So if we look at data, uh, we can actually write SQL queries here. We see all this information about our database. If we go into data, we can actually create tables here. But with Django, we don't wanna do this. We just wanna go ahead and run some migrations. So we have a fresh project up and running. So what I'm gonna do is go ahead and run python manage.py uh, migrate, <laughs> I forgot the command, and that should do this. And it looks like I have a misspell, so python manage.py migrate. Okay, so that should migrate the database. There we go, we're going through the default migration, so this will create things like the sessions tables, the users, and so on. And as I look at the database here in the background, I can actually see everything get created. So if we look here, we can go into auth users, we see our table, we see all the attributes here. Uh, let's actually create a super user. So we'll do python manage.py create super user. And we'll just go ahead and go through the defaults. Dennis, Dennis at email.com and create a password. All right, our user is created. So if I refresh it, here we go, we see our database table. So if you ever used AWS, you know that this process takes a lot longer. That was really fast. We created that connection. I might come out with more videos on Railway and how to do things like customize things, go through the payment plans and so on, but that was it. I just wanna keep this video nice and short. Uh, go ahead and give this a test. I'm really excited about Railway and uh, yeah, go ahead and test it out.